The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman singing for Steve Rhodes. I, I think Steve will be back next week. I'm not sure. In the meantime, we've got this hour, Dow's down 222 on this Friday, the 15th of September, uh, 34,683. Uh, yesterday it was up 300 points, now it's down 226, and it's really important right now, as I said to subscribers this morning to my opening call, we're going to be watching this because we have been looking at this as a, as a kind of a rectangle formation to the side, kind of a sideways trading range, um, arch formation, makes another arch formation, wasn't sure if it was going to break above the high of 35,000, what was it, and 70, I think, yeah, 35,070 on the 31st of August. Should mention just for those who are new to my work, uh, we did go short based on some of the technical tools that I have. Right here on August the 1st, the, the high was 35,679. That day we went short at the opening and uh, <clears throat> we remain short. And one of the things we're also, but we're also long from October, the Dow and the three times Dow um, from October, but we're also long from March of 2020 in the Dow Diamonds. So the big picture is that we're looking for higher highs and higher lows over a period of time. But in the short term, we've got this uh, signal that says fabulous gain from 36,952 high January the 1st to the 28,660. Uh, initially on the big spike and then it kind of went sideways and breaking out to the upside if you look at the S&P chart on the weekly basis it's a little different it actually went to a higher high than comparable percentage gain in the Dow because 4818 was the high back in January of 2022 uh, 3491 was the low back in uh, July oh, no it was October it was October of uh, 20, uh, 2022, and uh, this gain all the way to 4507 on July the 7th, that was really good. And then it came down, look at the daily chart, came down, made this beautiful arch formation with the plumb line just off the exact high, uh, tested that it went to 4335 just over the, the low that was made in June, had a good, a really good rebound, came back down, and now it's starting to form this H pattern that I always talk about, the dreaded H, where it takes out the left side low. I'm going to be watching this closely. But the weekly chart did make a beautiful cup handle, a cup formation. It, uh, almost, it wasn't, I can't call it technically a Chapman Wave breakout to the upside in a cup and ladle pattern because it did break out, but it was already in leg E. And it, get, it just stalled. So the weekly chart is still looking pretty darn good. The technicals are starting to deteriorate. The MACD's down, stochastic's down. The nine period moving average is just fabulous. It's holding so well. And that just says to me, I haven't yet got, I've got sell modes in all the daily charts. So the, um, the S&P, the Dow, the QQQ, IWM, Semiconductor, XLK. You can just go on and on. But the weekly charts have held like a rock. This is, well, I shouldn't say a rock because rocks can come down pretty sharp. But it's holding really well. Solidly, and you've got this big cup formation in the in the monthly chart, and the technicals are still pretty darn good. Look at the QQQ. So the QQQ is a little bit more vulnerable at this particular point because the semiconductors. There are so many semis in it, and you can see the semiconductor has a different chart formation. That weekly has got this H pattern right here, the one that I call the dreaded H. That's this one here, uh, where you get a sharp pullback, and then you get a arch formation that fails at an A or a B, peak A or a peak B. Remember, this has got nothing to do with A to B equals C to D. These are peaks and troughs. So I label them on the way up, A through G, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. It's at D that other things can happen. I can even go to an E or an F. Look, there's a D, and then it pull, makes a cup formation. 
barely makes 160.79 and the SMHS goes to 161.17 July the 31st. And then, oh, I should have mentioned for, uh, just uh, for uh, disclosure purposes, we are short from the from the two points of the high, uh, the SMHS. So look, here's that pattern. You got this, uh, this down, makes an arch, and then if it takes out that left side low, you've got to be really careful. And look what we've done. We made that straight down move, made the arch. This is a gray peak A gray because it's under the previous peak. So that's an A right there. We've got all of next week. Let's see what happens. Does it take out 143.35? Even even if it's not on a closing basis, if it just gets there, that becomes the H pattern, and now it becomes a pattern that you've got to respect. And look at the Chad Wave Inside Track Propellant Zone, and that just says any time you close under 140 in the SMHs in September, that's going to be a real problem. If it holds, that's great. And if you look at Apple, I've already moved on three steps away from the uh, – from the QQQ that I was showing you. Look at Apple. There's the dreaded H at a peak A, and it's going to turn down and maybe take out that left side low of 170. Oh, this is 171.96. Watching it closely. And you've got a doji candle peak D. Maybe it's an alternative count, but a D at least in the uh, monthly chart. There's just a period of, of rest that different cycles go through in the different sectors. Let's go back to the QQQ. And now let's look at the upside. The upside in the QQQ has to close above this downtrend. Let's see this little mini channel right here. It's called the falling axe formation. Lower lower highs and much lower lows. And all of a sudden it stalls and tries to make a cup formation to take out the high. That's this pattern right here. Uh, not that pattern. It's this pattern right here. Right here. Look, there it is. I drew it in. We haven't taken it out. This is where you go to a D or an E, but you start to make lower highs and much lower lows. And then it turns around, makes a cup formation, turns around, to, tries to make a cup formation. There it is, a large cup formation. And we'll see if it's able to hold. But in the meantime, that's a, that's a pattern that says if the, SM, if the QQQ What's today? Today's the 15th. So next week takes us through to the 22nd. And this is options expiration today, so anything can happen. A little later on, they might move the market up 200 points. You never know. But this says to me, yesterday was options expiration action. Today's just the result of something that shouldn't have been. That's what I'm thinking. So the 22nd, so we've got two full weeks of September next week and the following week. If at any point in the next two weeks the SMH is close above 382.50, that's a different kettle of fish, as we say in the business, in the fish business. So with that said, um, yeah, so I had questions before. Uh, could I look at, I, I wanted to just show you this. Yes, gold, GC. I didn't even touch silver. That was so silly in my show. I was so busy with everything else. Gold is up 17. It's taken out about three, four sessions on the left side going down. But if you look at the weekly chart, it's, this is, it needs a lot more to improve the chart. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying what has to be done to improve the chart. I'll be back in a moment. That was down 203. Is that good? Uh, 205? Yeah, I'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 so let me just finish my thoughts there this is Basil Chapman sitting again for the one and only Steve Rhodes but uh, he'll be back but in the meantime back at the ranch um, we're looking at gold having a very strong move, up 17. <clears throat> it's done this before, and then it gives it back. But this is really the issue. Is this going to become a cup formation or more like a ball formation because it's being stretched out in the uh, – let's go to this right here – in the weekly chart? Because, look, the nine-period moving average is still under the 14-period moving. You see the little black line there and the little pink line? The MACD is flattening out, but the histogram hasn't even come close to turning up. The unbalanced volume's okay. The stochastic is down at 27%. That's no strength at all in the weekly chart. Monthly chart doesn't look very much better, but that 9 is above the 14, and that is a good sign. <clears throat> Looking out, that's why I've been saying I'm thinking a little later on in the year there could be a really strong move. Maybe it's now. I'm not, I, I just – something's not quite right. And if you look at the uh, silver, SI – <clears throat> Good move up to up 2.24 percent, up 51 cents at 23.51. There again, the nine period is is very weak under the 14. It's way below the 23.89 200 period exponential moving average. It did make a peak D Doji. It did the one to one to the upside of the falling axe formation in the Chapman wave methodology. So this is just a, a give back of almost all the gains. In fact, the, all the gains because it went to a lower low. I didn't realize that. That's actually a D right there. Um, so most importantly, what we're looking at is there's a little ictus in the unbalanced volume. It says, yeah, a silver can balance, but that weekly chart so far is just saying mm, a balance, and then we'll see if it has the strength to follow through. That's really what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about can gold balance. Yeah, of course it can. It's doing it right now. Look at the GDX. The GDX is at a beautiful move. Here again, it's like, almost like the Dow. It's like the lowercase h goes to a lowercase m within the rectangle formation with a lot of resistance at 30.16. Fabulous move up to up 2.46%. MACD here is good. The 9 period moving average actually today just flipped positive. That's a good sign. So if the gold miners, and I love to see gold miners, I prefer to see the gold miners lead. Um, that to me is a good sign. So let's see what happens. And SLV is the equivalent of this is the that's the gold mines, the, the uh, 
SLV is the iShares Silver Trust, which is like the G uh, is like the GLD. Um, so this is gapped up with an iron reversal. I don't take iron reversal seriously when you've got anything that trades overseas at all um, first. And then because what happens, we just pick it up and there's a gap. But this weekly chart is a little, is a, a better consolidation. And we'll see whether or not, well, let's just make it simple. If the, the SLV trading at 21.29 at any point next week can even touch 2190s, I'd say that's a pretty decent short-term sign. If the GDX trading at, uh, sorry, you keep losing and going, going back into that back chart there. Um, if the GDX can close above 30.33, 30.16 is the 200 period moving average, can close above 30.30 for about two sessions, that's a good sign. Now, I'm not saying it can't happen. Well, that's anticipating that the dollar is going to stall here, and it certainly could stall, but it still looks really good on the daily. The weekly looks like it's just in the rectangle formation, going to the top of the rectangle formation. But let's put it together with the EUR, USD. And yes, I will get to those questions that I had. I'll get to it. We've got time. So the big plunge in the euro uh, makes a new low, way below the 200 period moving average, 9 period moving average under the 14. I had this long term. Uh, uh, trend line in place, and it took that was to that level there. Let me just correct that. See where it takes us to there, and to there. <clears throat> yeah, so it's hitting that line. This is there. G slash C goes to a D always, not always, most of the time, and that did go to the D, and that's usually where you can start to see some kind of a balance. But look what happened. The euro is outside the the rectangle. Sorry, the rectangle. Outside the channel line with the channel we've inside track propellant zone becoming a repellent zone. Look at the time sequence between these troughs. So this is, uh, it says to me, Euro is still very weak. Let's put it together with USD JPY. Um, USD JPY, type it in, not on the chart. Type it in in the little rectangle there. There we go. USD JPY. Look at that. Uh, G slash C invariably goes to a D. And we just did that today. D, and it's only barely higher. So this says, yeah, maybe we're starting to get a little tired in the dollar and the euro. And maybe that's why gold is anticipating something. If it is, then those levels I spoke about just a moment ago will be reached very quickly. But I'm still saying that. In the bigger context, those semiconductors don't don't ignore them. I just wanted to show you USD. What was it? PLN um, that made a peak E and is holding very nicely. And it did a cup formation, a lopsided cup formation in the weekly. This is the US dollar Polish zloty. And let's see the USD um, CAD. So the Canadian dollar made a peak F top in the in the in the monthly chart down channel resistance. I should have said in the triangle, the Chapman Wave inside track, I'm not going to put it in, inside track re repellent line, um, just a bit of a pullback, weekly chart pulling back as well. All right, enough with that. I wanted to go to just quickly high-grade copper I was asked about. Yeah, high-grade copper is just stalling. TGB, I don't know if it was news or anything like that. It was really unusual to see to take a mine suddenly spike like that. It does it every once in a while, and then it kind of gives it back. We'll see if it gives it back. Now let me go to the questions. So got the question. Let's go start off. A A AXP was the first one that I remember I uh, saw. So let me just go to the AXP is American Express. Mm -mm. Right on the 200 period moving average. I mentioned this the other day. I said in my video if I did, that I did for subscribers um, last weekend. I always do a, a video giving a recap and and a prognosis of what you expect in the next month. And we go through all the, the stocks and positions that we have, etc. Well, as far as I'm concerned, um, if you go to V, which is, there we go, Visa. Visa's uh, just not very far from its all-time high. In fact, uh, it tested its all-time high to almost to the penny just the other day. And I was pointing out that in every sector, I can name you three stocks. And they are all doing different things. Look. AZO, I'm moving along again, huh? AZO is uh, AutoZone, 
for kind of near its all-time high. AAP is um, is advanced auto parts Inc. Look at that smash to the downside. And what was A Z O O L Y O R L Y? In every sector, I can show you the same thing. That just look at this. This one's very close as well to its all-time high. So let's go back. So Visa, very close to all-time high. Mastercard actually did make an all-time high. Um, even today, it's at the all-time high, 418. Um, and then you get American Express. They all do something different, but they credit cards nevertheless. So this is a nice move to the upside. And I said to subscribers this morning, is the XLF holding quite nicely here, even though your rates are moving up like this. Is it telling us something? And I'll be back. So we'll look at American Express and we'll put it up when I return. I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. Bowser Chapman singing for Steve Rhodes. I like to bring this to show you this. Look at this beautiful symmetry. In this cup formation here in the E-mini, what needs to happen is it needs to get right out of this bar at 10.52 up to the 45.22 level. Um, and then maybe we can start talking about options expiration Friday where all crazy things happen. And then you can even look at 45.30. I'm not going there right now. I'm just saying 
Let's see what happens. This shit, it's really, oh, look at this. 10-minute chart, just red bars all the way down. It's kind of oversold. 45.18 would be the first resistance that I'd be looking at. All right, let's go back. American Express. Mm -mm. Look how important this 200-period moving average has been. And look what happens. Gets to peak E, peak E, peak D, peak D, peak E. And every time it gets there, it has some kind of a pullback. So we're watching this very closely here because it's a very quick and very small peak A to B and then peak C, high, high peak D and then high, high uh, peak D yesterday. There's a daily chart. MACD is okay. Stochastic is pretty good at 84%. Nine is over the 14, but we've seen this, this story before. And the unbalanced volume is kind of weak. And the relative strength is actually pretty good at about 60%. So I'm looking at this, and I said to subscribers this morning, are these, uh, is the XLF, are the, the financials telling us that maybe there is some strength here? They, they learned how to use the, uh, the, the interest rates to, you know, in terms of uh, how to position themselves to make it profits, et cetera. Well, if you look at this XLF, the 9P moving over to the 14, the weekly chart and the daily, uh, not yet the monthly, says, you know, it's more like a sideways action. So when I look at American Express is part of that, uh, part of the financial ETF. So when I look at American Express, I like this leg, leg A to the upside. And the 9 period moving average today has actually crossed uh, to an L. That means that particular index only is positive. The stochastics now at 61%. MACD is good. I don't like to see these sudden big spikes and to see them give it up right away. So if you are long, I would just say I'd wait. To, I, I don't know if you wanted to add to it or anything like that. Just give it a, about three to four sessions. I need that to see. Because, look, here's the 200-period moving average. Um, it's over it today, just over it. That's, it's been a support level that failed immediately. Is it going to be a, 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 a pattern that says I'm going to pierce it right away and go right up? I I always uppercase on the way up, so that should be an uppercase A, and it's great because I haven't got any buy signal to buy mode yet or anything like that. So this is just an initial pop to the upside. Weekly chart says, just stuck in a range. Monthly chart says, yeah, not too much. So I, I like what's happening right now, but it needs follow through, and it needs to make an A, then a peak A, pull back, and then a new leg be above that A. And then I'll say to you, you know what? It's trying to find a base of support now I think looking out a couple of weeks, I can see a much better rally. But at this particular point, it's just another one of those spikes to the upside that says, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I think I can, I think I can. But actually, I have to see if it can or it can't. So at this point, nice, you got it in, you're, you're okay. But I would not add to it. I'd have to wait a little bit. That's American Express. Next question was, let me go in order over here. Okay, down, down, down. Um, Lulu, Lulu, this is uh, Lulu Lemon, uh, Athletica Inc. had a big, big move to the upside, gapped on that news uh, earnings, etc. That was an F slash A. I think it's an F, and it's giving back a huge chunk. And the, it's a peak D in the uh, weekly chart and a leg D in the month. I think this has got a problem. It's about to fill in the gap, that, that, that day of the gap that was, was the 1st of September or, yep, 1st of September. My eye says that the 200 period moving average is way too low at 3, 3.59 to even discuss it at this point. But the three uh, right here, the black 14 period moving average in the weekly chart of 379, 381 to 379, I think that's going to be really important to hold. A close next week under 379 says, uh-oh, it's in that category that says starting to feel the pinches as, as consumers uh, stop buying the extra. The, I mean, Lululemon is more expensive, say, than Target, as far as I can tell. So I think that's a problem. So, yeah, just be careful. I don't know what, where, where you are, if you're long or short. If you're short, just make your stop 395 for now, 384. Or you can, you can make it today's high, 388. Make it 389. And then lower part, keep that as a core and lower, have a two part lower stop. One is a trading stop of you can name the points, three points. And the other is if it hits the 50 period moving average of uh, right there, of 382. 
I, I, for money management, I would definitely take something off there. Next question is CX. This is CMAX code. Now, this is the thing that I'm, the reason why someone asked me the other day, you've had such fantastic positions, especially over the years, but you tend to take off so that we don't have the full position when it makes its final top. Why, why is that? And the reason is, remember, I run a newsletter. Uh, if I was just, if I was in the real gambling aspect of it, I just say to you, you know what? You're in UEC. Double, double it. You got a hundred, make it two hundred. You got a two hundred, make it four hundred. And as it gets to highs, we got this incredible gain. And then you take off everything or whatever you want. What happens if on the way it suddenly and sometimes they do that? It just has there's this huge gap down. I have a, a subscriber now that that's had a fantastic winning position, who maybe have lost has lost a chunk of his capital. I don't like that. I don't do that. So within the context of CSX, look, it made that peak, D, it made a peak, E pulls back, walks the nine period exponential moving average, makes that D and then plummets and it goes from 8.48, I think it was, 8.46 on the 20, 30th of August. Today is trading at 6.77. Uh, you know, I don't want to, now on the way up, we've had this before, we didn't have it in this particular instance. I like to take little tads off. You're taking a little bit off. You've got your big core position, but you're taking a little bit off to money management. And then when it turns into a sell signal like that candle there, then you can lighten up a lot. I mean, we have a stock that was, we bought at 21. No, I'll show you what it is. Sim, uh, symbotic, end-to-end uh, -end, um, robotics, warehouse automation. Uh, it's at 31.89 down 76. We bought it in 21, it hit 64. We've been taking, we've got a little bit left and we've got a core position left at 21. And it's gone to the, it's going to test this 200 period moving average here of 31, got cut, more than cut in half since the high. If we didn't take that off and we were just holding, I know someone who's, who's had it all the way from, I think the 17s and when it went to 64 and maybe just took a little bit off well, it's still fabulous, but wow. I mean, you've given back. You know, you've just given back so much. And look, here's the Eiffel Tower in the weekly chart. Do this straight up to peak F. Chapman wave inverted Roman candle right there. Bell took out the low three times in a row. Not good. So that's the reason why. So let me just go back to CX as we go to the break. Yeah, I think it's going to test the six, uh, 650. Maybe get close to the low that was made on the 6th of July of 6.55, this is 6.78. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So, question came in Oracle. Could I have a little short tip? Oracle it looks like it could travel. Uh, into the close, yes. Oh, you're talking about white lightning? Um, that would be a, an options trade into the close. So let me just do this. You, oh, so you wanted the, uh, you wanted the short term. Um, that's not quite what I wanted to do right here. Okay, so uh, look at this. 127.54 back in June was the high uh, for Oracle. Comes down, makes an arch formation. It makes, it makes the... Arch formation right here fails at a peak, B, I think it is, and retests the left side low and takes it out, makes a new low in August, and then it has a fabulous move, goes to peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. The last one is a peak E at 127.54. This goes to, I, I've been talking about this for over a year and a half. It is unbelievable how many charts make almost exact, that's why we're watching the TLT for that 91 area. How many charts get to um, within pennies? We saw that already three times today. I don't even remember what they are because I've looked at so many of the charts. Within pennies of the left side high. 127.42 was the high five sessions ago. Then it comes out with news, gaps down, has a bounce, and now it's pulling back uh, down 97 at 112.69. I would say, I haven't done, I, I, I've just done this a little quickly, so I haven't been able to do it as fully as I would like. But I'm going to say that in the week of, towards the end of September, so in other words, within the next two weeks, I think it's going to test this whole area uh, with a low of 104.84 back in June. And it's trading at 112.65 right now. So that's what I'm looking at. Now, if you want to do the intraday, let's do this because, you know, we've done all the selling on the downside. There's your peak C and, the, and there's another peak C, C1, C2. It's not that much uh, buying coming in just yet. Let's go to, was that Oracle? Yeah, O-R-C-L. Um, so I'm not sure which way. Let's not know which way you're going to do white lighting at this particular point. Let's just do the chart and say, what are we looking at in terms of time? So I've got the, oh, look at this. So I'll do this. Here we go. Here's the low. Identify the lowest low bar. Start counting the Chapman wave. And you expect at a peak D, other things can happen. So here we go. A, B, C, C, C. That's still a C right there. Look, that high was 111.80, 111. 91. Okay, so then it goes to a D. And the stochastic and, and the MACD, everything's still very strong. So what did I say over here? Yeah, D. E. Is that an F? No, just an E. Okay, comes back down. Now you start a new buy signal. And it goes A, B. C and kind of stalls. Finally, it gets to a D. Here we are. A, B, B, 
B, B, B, B, B, B, B. There. Yeah. So that's a high of 114.45. We're looking at Oracle on a 10 minute chart, 145, 46. That was 45. There's your D. Always looking for a D right there. There's your D. And it pulls back. And then what happens is it goes into a sideways consolidation. I wish I could get the chart a little bit bigger. Maybe I can do this. There you are. That's what I wanted to see. That's what I should have done before. And now what we've got is A, B. <clears throat> oh, what happened? Was that C? Did I miss a C? No, I see that was a C right there. It was one penny higher. There it is. And there's your D. Okay, now it pulls back. Now here's the cup formation that I was talking about before, where you go to almost the exact high, but the technicals are way weaker. Look at this. Plink, right there. And plink, right there. We can even go plink right there again as well. Look at this. The nine pin moving average is good, but the MACD is way down and deflects lower. The stochastic's way down below 80% and the deflects lower. Unbalanced volume makes that high to the penny and then starts to come down. That high had weak technicals all the way around. So what I would do is I'd do this right here. And I'd say I'd go to that particular low right there. No, I'd have to go to that candle. Nah, this is not quite working the way I like it. Yeah, that's where I'd go. That I always choose a particular candle if there's not a trough or a, or a peak that just stands out as saying, use me, use me. All right. So looking at, well, that's going to be too short a time. You're looking at 4 o'clock this afternoon. So let me just do this, and I'll finish it up in a moment. I'm actually not going to tell you anything. I found that white lightning, as you do it, you've got to be doing the analysis. So if you do it now, it's got to be done for the very short term so that you can get your profits as quickly as possible. So all I'm saying to you, it's at 112.58. The technicals are weak, but the stochastic's just trying its best in the 10-minute and the one-minute to find support. I don't think it's going to. So the, tank, the target would be right here and would be by, uh, by 1 o'clock. Yeah, by 1 o'clock, it would hit 111.82. I don't know how you do it uh, for on, a, on a purely technical basis with options right now at this particular point because the options, as I can tell it, are the premium for the short side must be big enough that it really has to go to 111.30 for you to really make money. So that's what I'm looking at. Now, the market, you see it had this attempt to rally just a short while ago and it stalled. That tells you that so far the buyers are not finding the traction. So you've got to be careful. And any time on a day like this, you could get a flip to the upside with a Dow just suddenly rallying 100 and the S&P rallying 20. You could do that very easily, but it's, it's very tricky. Bar eight on the 30-minute ES, okay. <clears throat> okay, so now the question came in about the TLT. So the TLT bonds, um, right now, you see the way it's just persistently, the nine-period moving average is still weak. If I do the TBT, it hasn't yet taken out the high of 36.44. It's on its way. And that just tells me that in this particular pattern, it is not unusual to tag. This is what I call, it's, first of all, I draw in a rectangle to say it's the large rectangle. And I have two techniques. One is for a narrow rectangle, uh, others for the large, the wide rectangle. The wide one gets a lopsided cup formation. I call it the gravy cup. So if you took it from here to up there, it would be all lopsided. My eye doesn't like that at all. So just for my eye's sake, I always try to find a kind of a midpoint for the cup formation, and I'll find it on this candle right here. And I'll say, okay, now I can get I can get the cup formation right there. And it usually goes, if it makes higher highs and higher lows, it almost tags the previous high. It stops either right at, right under, or just above 
and then you've got to be careful, but it's usually at a PD. You only at a PD in TPT, but ultra short in the figure. So if you want to get up the right back down, down 170. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Yeah, so I had a question. I don't know if it's a question or not. Um, long Apple calls against the law of the day. Would like 175.79. Uh, Trading at 174.87 right now. This is a little bit different. You see, on the uh, 8.15, that's today. Look, Apple had a big spike at the open, and then it had a huge red candle, and it made a dreaded H pattern, but it's successful so far. It's holding the low. That says to me that on Apple, <clears throat> the selling pressure has already been done. So if there's any kind of uh, sudden upside move, that would be going, going towards targeting uh, at least a bounce. So that's a little, the chart is a little bit different. It's a, a chart that, I, that says to me, here your risk is, you actually know what your risk is and you know where you're wrong. But once again, this is um, not, not I'm, I'm done with that. I used to do that, and I used to do it for earnings uh, with options. And then I just found that, you know, for the times that you're successful, the times that you were unsuccessful and, and just feel terrible because it was just such a waste of money, you get the option, and within, one, within seconds you're wrong or you're right. And if you're wrong, you have to wait all night to see if maybe it'll change. Maybe it'll change when the they do the uh, when they do their report online, whatever it is. So this has already gone to a D, 
And now you've got a cell signal and a cell mode in the 10 minute chart. But I like this. It's a much different pattern because it's already done all the action to the selling on the selling side and it's making slightly higher highs, but it's also making slightly lower lows right up until this big spike. So this is the low bar right here. I, just for the moment, I, I don't always put the up arrow when I haven't got any real confirmation of a buy mode, but I'm putting it in here just to show you this is the low of the day. So now what you want to look at is each peak gets counted. So that's peak, gray peak A, gray peak B, pulls back, gray peak A, break, break. Oh, we're done. B, so this is the one that 200 feet moving average is 175.10. It has to get there by about uh, 12.40. If it doesn't get there, that's a problem. Hey, have a wonderful rest of the weekend. And as I said before, to our Jewish subscribers, Happy New Year and a happy, happy Passover. Um, get two chances at New Year. That's nice. Have a great weekend, everyone. I'll do my 